good morning floss tube welcome back to my channel my name is Christine and if you are new and visiting me for the first time I appreciate having you here and welcome okay it's February 5th it is Sunday February 5th and I am continuing to work on this from last month um, I know I had said that I wasn't sure where I was going to go this month with my stitching and I think that I am going to continue as of right now. I'm still enjoying this project, so I think I will continue working on it as a refresher. Or if you're new, um, if you want to check out my previous video, which, which is my January stitching vlog, that is floss tube number 104. Uh, I believe, yes, we are on 105 now, so this that would be 104. This was one of two New Year's Day starts. The other one is an RTO kit that I don't have with me at the moment called The Flavor of Sea Sand and Salt, I believe, is the name of that one. I will continue to work on that, and I'll show that to you in the next clip. I forgot to bring it uh, over here for my filming today. But that is one I'm aiming to maybe get a finish on. And so those were the two projects I worked on in January, and I so far I think I'm going to continue working on both of them in February until the mood changes. Um, as a refresher, I started here down at the bottom and I worked on spring uh, in January and ended up right about below the page break there. And so I will show you what progress. So I have done just a little bit of stitching so far this month, so I'm not giving you quite exactly my starting point, but very close to it. Let me grab it here. Okay, so I did move the hoop uh, just a little bit. Right after I filmed my January vlog, I moved the the hoop. I, I moved the project down in the hoop just a little bit because this part that I'm working on was kind of up in the corner up here, and I had a hard time finishing these the two letters over there, uh, which that is the edge of the page there. And so I moved it, and I am crossing over into new, a new page now. So this is pretty much, you can kind of see, is it, let's see, yeah, this is the center of the design here. Is that right? No, this. <laughs> this is the center. I don't know what that bold is up here. But anyway, that is the center. Okay, so the page break goes right here. And I have successfully crossed over into the new page. So this will be the summer section, and it's it's kind of exciting again because um, all of these symbols and colors I use down here have now switched, and they're all mostly, except for the, with the exception of a few of the greens, the colors I'm going to be getting into now are all new colors and new symbols, so it's like starting a new project. So very exciting. And I'll show you again here to get it so it's not glaring but you can see that I'm going to I'm in this area right here and it's going to be going up into these beautiful uh, purples and blues very excited about that so and these two dragonflies I get to stitch so I'm excited about that as well so I will continue doing that this month so far that's the only thing I'm working on um, I, it, with the exception of the other one, but I haven't done any stitching on that yet this month, and I'll show you that uh, an update for that when I get around to it. I did want to talk about what I did with these organizers. Um, this kit originally came with two of these organizers, just two really long organizers, and uh, the colors, uh, I mean, the hanging thread was really long, and every time I stitched, I was just ending up with a big rat's nest. So I took the longer thread organizers and cut them into thirds. So now I have six of these little ones. And then uh, whoever, I don't know who to give credit for for this, my friend Kim that I'm stitching the, uh, what is it, Balloon Glow with, is the one that brought this to my attention. And I do not know who the original person who came up with this, uh, this idea is, but it is to take one of these, to take the dimensions organizers and trim trim the threads off and then do some hole punches on the other side and then hook them on like you do with a thread organizer. What that does is it makes these hanging threads half as long. So 
they are now extremely more manageable because now I've got these littler pieces, which in this kit is great because each section I'm in, I don't use the whole entire slew of colors. I only use a few select ones, so I can put the rest in their bag and then it's just so manageable because the threads are quite a bit shorter. So I'm having less tangles and then when I do get tangles, they're easier to uh, straighten up. So thrilled with this idea and if you haven't seen it before, maybe that will give you an idea of something you can do to organize your dimensions kits. Okay, I'm going to get to stitching and I'll check in in maybe about a week or so and let you know uh, the progress I've made or if you know me, I may completely switch to another project or something else because like I said, I just sort of uh, go where the stitching wind takes me and <laughs> work on what I feel like. So, okay, I will see you in about a week. Happy stitching! Hello, it's not quite the weekend yet. It's Thursday, February 9th, and I wanted to uh, just do a little bit of a check-in to show you that I um, did finally cross over. There's the page fold right there, so you can see that I have completed now everything, for sure everything, including the back stitching on that the lower page there. If you hear my wind chimes, it's because it's a very cold and very blustery day outside. I'm sitting right by my window and my wind chimes are just going crazy. Um, I have now moved the hoop down as low as I can and I just wanted to check in because I made a bold move. I never like stitching from the bottom of a page up. It just feels wrong and backwards to me. So I counted and went all the way up to the top of the page and stitched a word. Yes, I know that seems bold, and I know that that's something that some of you would never try, but rest assured, I'm 100% sure that that word is in the right spot. And first of all, when I wanted to find that spot up there to start the S, I counted from five locations down here, and every single one of them led me to that right spot. So I stitched the S and the U, and then I double checked from the U, checked up everything was fine, did the M. After each letter, I rechecked my counting from several spots down here all the way across till the R and everything matches up perfectly. So I'm confident that that word is in the right spot and I'm really excited because now I get to start stitching, you know, from the top up here down to match up here. Now, I will constantly be checking myself, you know, as I go to make sure that I haven't made a mistake. But I got to thinking, you know, a lot of ways that you can do that is to stitch kind of a trail up to there. And I was going to do that, but I kind of think, knowing myself, that there was a greater chance that I would make a mistake stitching my way up to there than just counting my way up to there. So I did it. I did it, and I stitched that whole word last night. And what I'm excited about is, let me get my, my picture. Okay, so there's the word summer up there. And now what I get to stitch, I'm really excited about next is this dragonfly, which will bring me right over to the wreath. And then I think I might start up here where uh, the letter R is and maybe sort of work my way kind of down. But I, I do want to get that word out of the way. So I think I'm going to stitch the dragonfly and then I think I will sort of work myself a trail down to here just to, you know, match that up and then come back up here and just kind of fill in down to there. So that's my plan and I feel much better about working, you know, down the page rather than up. Okay, so I will check in on the weekend and let you see what I've gotten done by then and happy Thursday. See you soon. Well, good morning on this snowy, very cold Wednesday morning. It is Wednesday, February 15th. Okay, sorry I didn't get here over the weekend to do a an update, but I got just busy doing a lot of things, one of which is uh, recording a instant pot yogurt making video if you're wondering why that random video showed up on my channel. I was having coffee with a friend last week and I was telling her that I just recently discovered, even though it's been around forever, um, making yogurt inst uh, instant pot yogurt and I just discovered it and I've been making a batch every week 
And that's why that was up there. I told her that I would make a video for her showing her how I did it. And I thought, well, if I'm going to go to the trouble of making a video, I may as well upload it to my channel. So that's where that random video came from. Okay, let's get started and uh, show you what I've been up to. I think this is the first time this month that I've showed this project because uh, I did not work on this project until uh, a couple days ago. So it's the 15th now. So yeah, I think I was started working on it around the 13th and then yesterday the 14th. And uh, last month I had gotten, so it's two pages. The pattern is two pages. Uh, the first page stops about there. And last month I went gangbusters on it. This was one of my new year new starts uh, with Julia over at Julicious. I wanted to get this done this month and uh, so yeah the fact that I didn't even start working on it at all this month until about the 13th is a little disappointing but that's okay. I did officially finish the top page. So here we are with it. And it only has minimal backstitching, these little areas right over here, and then just some kind of going down by the window there. It does this weird thing where it has you backstitch in a couple places right down the middle of a stitch. And it's kind of hard to make that look nice, but I think it's kind of supposed to look a little rustic and willy-nilly anyway, so I try not to fret too much about that. And uh, it's, you know, I mean, it's kind of an old window, so... I don't think it's meant to be perfectly perfect. Okay, so I am ready to move the hoop down to the next bottom part, which is going to have the adorable gull in it. And I'm excited. Okay, so yes, that's all I have to show on that one. Uh, the rest of the time I spent stitching was done on my wreath. And let me show you how much I've gotten done on that, which I'm very impressed with. Impress, impressed with my progress on that. Uh, I think, didn't I had just, we had just talked about how I made the big jump to do the letters up here. And so since then you haven't seen it, but yes, I don't think I've showed you anything since then. So this is the dragonfly, which the lighting is kind of weird on it. It's very pretty. And uh, then I had said it, exactly what I did here. I wanted to get those letters out of the way because I think where the hoop is now, those are the only letters that I need to stitch and they're a bit boring. So I like to take those in small doses. I think there's gonna be part of the word fall over here, but um, most of that's gonna be, I think, on the next page. And then I just worked myself all the way down here to make sure that that did match up, which I knew it would because I've been counting all along as I go. And so I'm definitely, definitely on track with that jump that I made. So I'm gonna finish off a little bit of these flowers that are down here, I'm gonna finish those off. And then I think I'm gonna work up here and then start just kind of working my way down this way. I'm still loving this project. If you, actually, if I'm honest, this is really the only thing I wanna work on right now still. It's the one that uh, I'm enjoying the most actually. I'm still not tired of it. So I'm gonna continue on with it. I uh, haven't had quite as much stitching time this month but enough though enough that I'm happy with it I get to stitch usually a little bit at least a little bit every day so I'm happy about that when I posted a picture on Instagram there was uh, a, a few comments of people that wanted to know what that adorable bird was that also showed up in the picture and hold on let me put my scissors down so here is my little he is very kind of instant let me move this out of the way Okay, this bird right here is uh, a Just Nan pattern that I stitched years ago. I would probably guess maybe 2016 is when I stitched, stitched it. I was trying to look back for my pictures and it was sadly on the old Instagram that got hacked and all those pictures uh, are never to be seen again. Um, actually, no, I did. I, I think I took screenshots of all my pictures because, well, long story. Anyway. But the fact is, 2016 is when I stitched this little bird, and he's a little bit wobbly on the legs. I think I need to, um, yeah, I, I think he's just being held by a magnet on this little Altoid tin that I distressed when I was doing my distressed Altoid tins. And there's a magnet on the inside that he kind of perches on there. But this is how he looks. I believe that this pattern was called Bluebird Tweet. 
I do not know for sure if I can find the picture of the pattern because um, I don't know if I have the pattern anymore, but he's a little double-sided bird. Cute. It was the only first and only Just Nan project that I've stitched. And I, like I said, I he's a little wobbly where I put the legs in. I don't think I did that part quite maybe as, like I should have. So I think if I were to stitch this a second time, I would uh, do some things differently. But he's got the little bird, the little be uh, berry in his beak there, which is so cute. So, yep. And that is where that little bird came from. And he's adorable. He's in his whole, whole wobbly little self. Uh, speaking of birds, another thing I did this weekend, if you follow me on Instagram, is I got an exciting uh, little photo session with a bohemian waxwing. And if that is of any interest to you at all on how that whole thing came about, stay tuned to the end of my video for the little bird nerd section because I'm going to tell you all about it. And if that's no interest to you, then that's why I'm saving it to the end. Okay, I have a busy day. I'm going to get started and I will check in just as soon as I have more to update. See you soon. Good morning, Floss Tube. It is Friday, February 24th, and I know that just right off the top of my head because this is the third start that I've tried to this video. The end of the month is really just like coming up so quick. I just can't believe how quick February is going. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit of an update right here and show you what I've gotten done. Well, since the last video, you can see that I've gotten this whole area done right here, and I got it backstitched as well. So let's get a little closer. Uh, that was a little bit of a tedious area to do because I didn't, it was kind of just a whole bunch of just mishmash of stitches that I couldn't really tell what they were until I backstitched them. So it was kind of, I don't know, it was just kind of boring. So this area that you can see outlined here is going to be a big bunch of lilacs with some leaves. And then right up here, as you can see, I kind of ventured up there and was starting to work down this way because this is um, some cherries and then just some background stitching up there. So I think my thinking was I was going to kind of start up here and get it to where this little bunch of lilacs was kind of the only thing left to stitch in that area. So let me show you. Down there, kind of show you what I'm talking about. So you can see right there. So this is the area that I just did was all of this. And then you can see the lilacs right there. And then I've started working on the cherries up there. And I think the middle of the design is about right there. So I won't get it done. I won't get to the middle point by the end of February and that's okay. I mean, I got more done than I thought I was gonna do. Yeah, considering the fact that I was also working a little bit on that other project and um, I was working a little bit on my felt heart wreath that I was gonna try to get that done by, by uh, Valentine's Day, but I didn't and I'll upload a video for that, I think when I get it all done, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna work on it anymore this year. So you might not see that video till next year. Anyway, that's the felt, the felt tube. So I keep my felt videos separate just because I always have a lot to do with that. So there, it's a little too much to add on to my floss tube videos. So be sure to check out my felt tube. Uh, I make playlists. So if you go up to the top, if you're on like my home dashboard where you see like videos, you'll see up at the top a little tab called playlist. And I try to organize my videos according to like floss tube or gardening or whatever it is that I'm into. Um, that, that could be the segue into what I'm going to talk about, but I'm not because I'm not done talking about stitching. So forget about that segue. Uh, I wanted to show you, okay, so I haven't worked on my seagull project at all since the last clip, so nothing to show there, but I did get three new little Mill Hill kits because um, spring into Mill Hill 2023 is going to be coming up soon, probably the first day of spring, uh, Kat and Morgan. Um, I'll put their names b below here, and uh, they host that sale every year where you just grab anything that speaks spring to you in the Mill Hill kits and start stitching it so be watching their Instagram for that um, but I did buy some of the new ones uh, not too many of the new Mill Hill 2023 releases but I did buy this one which is so cute called Little Llama and that's what it looks like on the inside and 
Then I got this one just because I've seem to always stitch the food ones, most of the food ones. So this is their newest food one, bacon and eggs, which is cute, isn't it? Look at that piece of toast with jelly on it. Looks tasty. That's the back there. And then while I was at it, there's been one that this is not new. This is actually from probably quite a few years ago. Um, I could probably look and see, but I'm not gonna take the time to look. But this one is called coin purse. And I just got that one just because I thought it looked really fun to do all the little beading and it looks like they got a little chain right there. So that's cute. That's probably going to be the one I stitch first. So very cute. Um, I think that's all I have to talk about at this during this clip because that's the only stitching I've gotten done. But I've gotten, okay, like I need another craft, I, okay, this isn't a new craft, but I've just kind of recently ignited a little interest in knitting again. Um, so I know if you've watched my channel before, you'll know that I have kind of dabbled in knitting here. Uh, I've, I struggle with knitting, it's hard. I'm definitely more of a crocheter and I've been crocheting for a lot of years since I was little and it's just very easy for me to do. It comes really naturally and I was kind of thinking I wanted to crochet and I was kind of dabbling into crocheting some hearts. I tried to make a little heart pillow um, around Valentine's Day that ended up being a fail and then I thought oh I want to make something cute crocheting and then I met with uh, a friend of mine here that um, we, we just met for coffee and I said, well, bring some yarn. Let's, you know, and she had some yarn books, some crochet and some knitting books. And we'll, so we said we were gonna look through something to kind of get inspired for our next project. And she had a knitting book that had all these really cute uh, knitting garments in it. And I thought, you know, I really need to learn how to knit, like to where I can knit clothing, knit sweaters and stuff like that. Now I have knitted a couple pairs of socks struggled with socks for a few times for a few times that I tried until I found um, Tina's video uh, simply in stitches here on floss tube but she also does a lot of knitting and thanks to her I was able to successfully knit two pairs of socks because of her technique but I've also learned that socks just aren't my thing they're I haven't done enough of them yet to where I'm comfortable with them and they, they're kind of fiddly so um, without talking too much about knitting uh, what I ended up doing was looking for something that I can learn to just be kind of proficient in knitting. So I found this book on Amazon called 200 Knitting Blocks. Now there aren't actually 200 individual blocks in this. I mean, there's not 200 unique patterns in this book. And I read the reviews and a lot of people said that don't be expecting 200 unique blocks because a lot of them are the same blocks, just different color scheme. So I think you have like 100, maybe 180 or something like that which is plenty for me. I mean, you know, I have a ton I need to learn. So I was just looking through this book and at the beginning it has like a picture of all the different blocks that are in it. So this is just one page, but you can see there's a lot of different uh, styles. And if, you know, if you want me to do a flip through of this book at some point, I will, but I bought it. And then because I know how to knit kind of basics, I mean, I know how to knit pearl and I can, you know, follow some patterns, stuff like that didn't know how to do any feral knitting, didn't do, know how to do any diagonal knitting, knitting, I don't know how to do intarsia. And I'm just also just, my tension's not that good, I'm just not that proficient at knitting. <laughs> so I am on a mission to up my knitting game. So that has kind of taken a little bit of my stitching time away um, and my felting and all the things I wanna do, uh, but that's okay. I just really, sometimes I feel like just using, playing with yarn. So let me show you, I've done three blocks. The first block I picked out of there. Now this block, I was supposed to, these blocks were supposed to be about six inches and I'm not good at gauge or anything. So I just grabbed the size knitting needles that my Red Heart yarn, I'm just using some Red Heart yarn said to do. But this was my first attempt at knitting a diagonal block right there. So this is just garter stitch. So you knit every row. Here's the back side of it there. So the special technique with this block was knitting on the diagonal and color changes. So that's what I did. Yeah, so pretty good, pretty good. Uh, then the next stitch I did, um, I can't remember what they called this block, but it's this style and I don't know if it goes this way 
or this way it probably doesn't matter but it's just kind of like almost like a basket weave type thing so this wasn't really very challenging to me um, because it was just kind of knit purl knit purl and um, you just had to follow the pattern so it was kind of easy but it kind of got me comfortable with knitting again because and I've mentioned this before I'm a combination knitter and I didn't quite understand that I was a combination knitter for the longest time. I finally found a YouTube video on here that explains the style of knitting I have, that I do. And I have to make some adjustments when I read patterns when it comes to decreases. I have to do something opposite. And if you want more detail, I won't go into, I won't get into the weeds and talking about that because if I really start doing a lot of knitting, I'm gonna have to have knit tube. <laughs> so that I don't have to add everything into a floss tube, which I know a lot of you don't mind it. A lot of you, we all kind of seem to be multi craftual so I know you don't mind that, but um, I'm gonna just keep this brief in case knitting is not your thing. Um, so I just wanted to show you that those, and then I did this third block, and this one I didn't block, so it's gonna be a little harder to see the pattern. Now this was a completely new technique for me because I have, um, let me put it in front of my face so that you can see the pattern a little bit better. So it's, well, let me put it in front of the book here. Can you see that it's got like a, like a lacy pattern in it? Never done that before. And that was really fun. I really enjoyed doing that. And now the fourth block that I'm working on, which I'm just barely getting a start on. Well, okay, that's not necessarily true. Me and my, my friend at coffee last night, when we were, we, we thought we would try. Now she has done some fair isle knitting before i had never done it um but we thought we would pick a block out of the book to do together and this is what i stitched last night when i was sitting at starbucks having coffee with my friend this right here um i the reason i took it off the needles was because uh i was knitting i knitted them in the wrong size needle so they won't match they won't be the same size as my other blocks in case i do anything with these so um Anyway, that's what my back looks like. I don't really know. This whole catching the float thing on the back uh, was confusing for me. And I, because I know a lot of people stitch, I'm learning that you stitch Fair Isle typically in the round. So you don't usually ever have to purl the backside. So when I'm purling the backside, I have to catch this yarn going across. And I just don't know if I'm doing it right. So, but anyway, I'm completely excited that I have something that looks like that which I've never done before so I'm learning I'm gonna be a pro by the time I do 100 blocks I'll probably try and do 100 blocks out of this book um, yeah that's all there is for knitting I uh, did buy some new knitting needles because I have the knitting needles that are connected the what are those called circular needles and I wanted some straight needles and the only straight needles I have in my that I think I've carried over from my mom. They're these right here, because I've started knitting this other block. These things are like super long. So I don't really know. I guess maybe if you're knitting an afghan, you probably want to use these really long ones. But uh, I went ahead and just got on Amazon and ordered a whole set of straight needles that are a little bit shorter, like this. And it also came with like the little cable needles and the Oh my gosh, yarn, uh, the yarn needles for weaving in the ends and stitch markers and point protectors. And it was like this really great deal for like $20. So anyway, uh, so yeah, I'm all set with the knitting. And I think that's all that I have to talk about right now for today. Let me make sure I didn't have anything here. Oh, I did want to say too, when I was talking about how uh, I couldn't remember who it was that had the tip of putting the, uh, taking the dimensions thread organizers and doing the hole punches and then hanging them on so that they're a little bit shorter and a little bit more organized. Uh, stitching, the Stitching Farmer, put her name down here and link her below. Yes, <laughs> I completely, it just hit me one day when I was watching her channel, it's like, Oh yeah, she's the one. She's the one that I that I think she came up with that kit. I'm going to give her credit, unless you know somebody else who had this idea. I feel like she's the one that I should give the credit to. So please check out her can channel. She's very relaxing to listen to and does beautiful stitching, dimensions kits, mirabilia's, hades, chatelaines. Yeah, she does it all. 
Okay, uh, I have more shout outs. I have more people I've been watching and none of them are at the top of my head right now. Um, I will try to remember to do a segment with the floss tubers. I've been new floss tubers that I found and just oldies but goodies that I like to watch. Okay, that's it for now. I will see you when I have something more to show. Maybe more knitting blocks and definitely more stitching. I'm still loving this and I can't wait to work this weekend on uh, getting more of the cherries done. So, okay, happy Friday. Okay, here we are at the end of February and I have one last clip just to show you my final progress for February. I finished this block. <laughs> it was tedious. I don't even know if I did that part right with the floats in the back, but it's not very stretchy going this way. So I think that I did do a little bit too tight of a tension, but for my first time trying this, uh, I think it looks okay. I did also want to talk about, if you're wondering why I'm using brown yarn, it's because I have a whole bunch of different shades of brown and tan in my collection of yarn and I need to use it up. So I figured I would practice, uh, I would do these practice squares with all of my brown and tan yarns. So that's the reason why I'm using that color scheme. Um, okay, and then the stitching. Got one last clip to show you here about my wreath of all seasons. And I ended up getting all of this section all done and backstitched. Here are the cherries and the leaves here. And then you can see that this is the outline here of the of sunflower that's going to go into the fall section. So this is kind of the midline of the project right there. You can still see my fold um, because this Ada is very stiff. <laughs> so the fold kind of just stays put and I can't even get it any, I know all these little wrinkles here. I mean, I've pulled this thing as tight as I can in this hoop and it still just kind of looks like it's got some wrinkles there. So, uh, all that's left to do in the summer season is the big little bunch of lilacs there and the dragonfly and I think part of the word fall right here. So plans for March, I'm going to continue working on this because I want to get all of this done, the dragonfly, and then I think I'll move the hoop and maybe stitch the giant word fall right there. Uh, then I think I'm going to put this away for a little bit because um, also in March, I want to work on my goal project. I haven't done anything more with that this month, so I don't have any progress to show you on that. Just pretty much worked on this and just a little bit of knitting. So going into March, my plans, which are always subject to change, are to be to continue working on this till I get the summer section done, then I'm gonna put it away. I also, uh, I think, uh, like I mentioned earlier, spring into Mill Hill will probably be in March, so I'd like to stitch, um, uh, start a spring-themed Mill Hill kit. Continue working on the goal, hopefully get a finish on that project. And then I have a friend on Instagram named Judith. Hi, Judith. Uh, we were talking, um, messaging each other about Marjolaine Baston, and decided that we're both going to work on a Marjolaine Baston project in March. And I think I'm going to pull out one of my old Marjolaine Baston whips that I have. I haven't decided which one yet. So stay tuned to be announced in March which one I decide to work on. But if you have a Marjolaine Baston you want to work on in March, uh, I always have an ongoing hashtag where you can add it to on Instagram. I think it's mbaston. Hashtag M Baston Sal. I'll put the tag there so you can see what that is specifically. But please tag your Marjolaine Baston projects because I love to see them. And her work is just so pleasurable to work on those kits and her artwork. So, um, okay, that's it. I need to get this edited and uploaded. I haven't done any editing. I usually edit my clips as I go along. And then at the end of the month, I don't have much to do. But I haven't edited anything yet. So... I suspect this video is going to be a couple days late going up, but that's okay. All right. I hope that you all had a wonderful February, 
and I will see you at the end of March with more stitchy goodness. Bye for now. Hello, hello, my birding friends. I have an exciting story for you today. I am so excited to tell you my story of my rare, okay, it was a rare bird sighting for me. Uh, depending on where you live, it might not be so rare for you, but uh, if you follow me on Instagram, I know I know there are probably those of you aren't on, that aren't on Instagram and you will have not seen my picture, but I maybe about two weeks ago, I would say, I've uh, uploaded a picture of a bird and now I'm going to tell you the story of that bird and how I spotted it. So uh, the story starts about, so what is today? Today is the, we're approaching the end of February. It's the 27th today and maybe about two or three weeks ago I was just reading on my phone and I got a, a little, a story came up saying that uh, this um, rare bird is being seen all over Colorado in record numbers this year. And so I read the article and saw that it, it was a bohemian waxwing. So, of course, that piqued my interest, and I thought, oh, you know, how interesting. I have actually never seen a cedar waxwing. So I just I went ahead and found the bird card out of my little uh, bird section here to show you a little bit about what a cedar waxwing looks like, just in case you've never seen one. And so a little bit about cedar wax wings, where I live here in Colorado. We apparently do get them, but it's, uh, they're not seen, I think, really regularly on a regular basis. And I certainly don't usually see them in a suburban area like mine. They're, they're not the kind of uh, bird that visits your backyard feeder. So uh, unless you're out walking around in like, um, you know, areas where there's probably water or whatever, I don't know really about their habitat. I guess we could read about that. Uh, it says, so here, let me just show you really quick. This is what a cedar waxwing looks like. This here is, uh, this is an adult and that's a juvenile right there. And they have a very distinct look, as you can see, very pretty. They've got this black mask and almost looks, they almost look like a, like a masked villain or something. And they've got the little, uh, red tip on their wings, a little bit of yellow underneath uh, the tip of their tail there very beautiful so i've always wanted to see a cedar waxwing because i know that they're kind of elusive but you can see them here in colorado and i have been on the lookout for one for many many years and have never seen one in order to understand the bohemian waxwing i wanted to show you what a cedar waxwing because they're cousins i wanted to, the point of the story to be that i have never seen a cedar waxwing in my area so the odds of me seeing a bohemian waxwing i probably thought i thought was probably pretty rare and i wasn't since most of the time i don't go out looking for birds specifically i most of the birds i see either come to my backyard or kind of come to me and it just so happens i have my camera with them but it's it's rare one time i went on a, the lookout for a snowy owl that apparently was being seen in our neighborhood or like around our neighborhood by a lake that I live near. And for like three days, I went and tried to chase down that bird just by wherever all the locals were saying he was being seen. I never could ever see that. So I just don't have the time in my life to go and <laughs> search for the birds like that. It's like, if they don't come to me, I probably won't see them. So I sort of put that on the back burner. I'm like, okay, I'll keep an eye out for them, you know, because they are being seen a lot. But the odds of me seeing one are probably pretty slim. So one day then, maybe it was a week later. Oh, and then I should say that then a couple of days, then my husband said, oh, did you read that news article about that uh, bohemian waxwing? I said, yeah, I read that. And then I saw it on the news again. So it was clearly a pretty exciting thing for Colorado here in my area to uh, be on the lookout for these bohemian waxwings. So I'm going to look up a bohemian waxwing if you'll just bear with me a little bit. This is another book I love. Um, it, this is called The Field Guide to Birds of North America, and it is a National Geographic. I have found this uh, book to be one of my favorites as a go-to reference for birds. I love the pictures of the birds in this book. Very detailed, and it shows you the juvenile, the male, the female breeding, their breeding plumage, their non-breeding plumage. So uh, very comprehensive, and I f have... Uh, referenced this book many times. So let me look up the cedar waxwing. So when you want to look up a certain bird, I mean, they, they have the little thumb taps here um, where it's like the gulls, the flycatchers, the warblers, sparrows, finches. But say you don't know what kind of bird you're looking for, you can actually look up the name of the bird in the uh, index here. So 
And let's look up wax wings. All right, let's see where we're at here. Warblers. Okay, so wax wings, you've got the cedar wax wings and the bohemian wax wings right there. So page 372. So before I had looked them up in this book, uh, so let me tell you the story of the, so here's the bohemian wax wings right here. They look very similar to, let me get my pointer here because my nails look horrible. Here is the cedar wax wing right here. And here is the bohemian wax wing. I mean, there's a little bit of a difference, but of course this is, um, uh, that's a juvenile right there. Okay, and that's an adult. Um, they're very similar at first glance. I mean, if, if you spot them, you can maybe notice a difference on their wings here. But uh, I think depending on the time of year it is. I mean, they both have a yellow tip on their tail. Uh, they both have that mask on, but you can tell that the cedar wax wing has a little bit more of a white stripe on top of the mask as opposed to this. But those are all kind of details that are a little hard to see. Their main distinguishing feature is if you look at their tail feathers underneath, and you can definitely see when you're looking at them live, the bohemian waxwing has a cinnamon colored tail feathers underneath, whereas the bohemian waxwings has the white tail feathers. So I did not know any of this um, until after I took the pictures. <laughs> so uh, what uh, this is this is how I came across this bohemian waxwing. So I'm on a walk one day with my son. And when you walk out of our house, if you turn right, it brings you to the um, sort of green belt near my house about a block away. And so typically we go and we get on the bike path and we walk and then we come back that way. A lot of times when I walk, though, I go out of my house and I turn left and I go one block the other way and up around the block because there's a hill. And a lot of times I add that hill onto my walk, but I mostly do that either when I'm with myself or... Sometimes my husband will like to go that way too. But usually with my son, we go onto the bike path and we walk and we come back home. We were just walking away. This was just a Saturday afternoon and Saturday, sort of late afternoon, early evening. And we went on a really long, long walk around on our bike path and we were coming back. And I think we were just kind of so caught up in our conversation that when we came back off the bike path, I went, so I, I guess I subconsciously sort of guided us the way that I usually go, which is the, you know, up around that extra block to get that hill. So we're walking around the block and then we, we turn the corner and there's a uh, house on the corner that has a tree in its front yard. And I, at the time, I, I never really paid attention to what type of tree that is. I would have said it was some type of a cherry tree or had some kind of berries on it. But lo and behold, this thing was just filled with robins. And I told my son, I said, wow, look at all those robins on that tree. They're really going after those berries. And I stood and just, you know, took in the sight for a minute. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, my God, Riley, there are cedar wax wings in that tree with the, with the robins. I got to go home and get my camera. So, of course, we're only about a block and a half away from my house. And these birds weren't going to go anywhere anytime soon because this tree was loaded with these berries or whatever it was. They were loving them and they weren't going to go anywhere. So I was like, okay, let me just sort of race walk back home, grab my camera. Thank God it was charged <laughs> because uh, sometimes I do let the battery just die when I haven't used it in a while. It was charged. I grab my camera. I go walking back and I, I just end up taking hundreds of pictures of all these birds on this tree. At the time, I don't think at the time I was even thinking of bohemian wax wings. I was so excited that I was actually seeing cedar wax wings. I completely ignored all the robins and I just was taking all these pictures of the cedar wax wings. And, you know, when you're photographing birds, you take a hundred, usually you get a few good ones and the rest are blurry because they're, you know, they're always just moving so fast. So uh, I just stood there awkwardly standing in this person's, taking pictures of this person's front yard tree and their neighbors across the street. And, you know, I mean, I, I think it was obvious I was taking pictures of all these birds, but still it is kind of awkward when you're just, you know, standing near somebody's front yard, taking pictures of their tree for a long time. I get back home. I'm so excited. I was like, oh, I can't wait to download these. And then my, I think it was either my husband or me just said, oh, you, I wonder if there was any of the Bohemian wax wings there. And I said, well, I don't know. I don't even know what the difference between the two is. So that's when I finally Googled it and realized that one of the main 
distinguishing factors were those tail feathers. So I download all my pictures. I start looking. They all have white tail feathers, white tail feathers. And then lo and behold, there's, I got this beautiful a couple of shots of the Bohemian Waxwing with a full frontal so I can see his cinnamon colored tail feathers. I was so excited that I got to see this elusive bird. What are the odds that I that day walked, you know, around the block and saw them in that tree? So uh, I just download all the pictures and I upload it. I, of course, I uploaded it to Instagram and to Facebook. And, you know, my neighbors are like, oh, wow, that's the one that was on the news. And, yeah, it was just really an exciting moment that only a birder would ex would appreciate. So then I got, it got me curious. So the next day, so this was evening. So the next morning I get up, I walk up to the tree again. There's probably half as many birds. Most of them are robins. I see only one cedar waxwing. I just took a video because I kind of wanted to show um, after the fact sort of what the tree looked like um, on the corner. So I'll insert the video there of, of that. And then I did pick one of the, they didn't, they pretty much stripped the tree, but there were a few of these left. So this is what it is. And I now uh, in hindsight see that it's not really a berry. I think it's some type of a crab apple or something. Can you kind of see that? It's hard. You know, it's, it's like hard. You can't really squeeze it. And um, if you know what kind of tree that is, I would love to know. So between the video you can see and then you can see that that's what the little crab apple looks like. It's not your typical crab apple that I'm used to seeing, but apparently they loved them. And maybe they wait for them to get kind of dried and fermented like this before they uh, eat them. But you can bet I'll be stocking this tree every year at this time uh, from now on to see if the cedar wax wings probably won't be bohemian wax wings again because apparently the last time they came in these these numbers to colorado was 2013 so it's just was kind of rare that i probably won't see a bohemian wax wing again but maybe the cedar wax wings will be back again because a lot of times they'll remember a food source and then they'll come back to it again um i don't know but yeah it's apparently it almost looks like in this picture here that that's what they're eating even in that picture so, oh, maybe not. That more looks like hawthorn, I think, a hawthorn berries. But anyway, that is my exciting story of my bohemian waxwing with oh, my sighting of a cedar waxwing, which was exciting enough, but got the bonus bohemian waxwing there as well. I think they're a Canadian bird, so the, you Canadians up there probably see them all the time, and it's probably not that unusual for you. Have no idea if they're a European bird at all. Uh, that's it. If you have a story, a cedar waxwing story, or any kind of a rare bird story, I love when you share it with me and, uh, you know, tell me what you're seeing in your neighborhood as far as the birds go. And if you know what kind of a tree or uh, fruit that is, I would love to know. Oh, I did want to say too that later on that day, I went back to bring my camera just so I can get more pictures. So this was the next day. So there were some left in the morning, but when I went in the afternoon, there was not a bird to be seen and there's not been a bird to be seen on that tree since. So I either caught them on the day and a half that they were there, or they were there maybe several days and I just caught them on their last day. Okay, I hope you enjoyed my story. Bye-bye. And I will see you at the end of March uh, with more stitching. Bye for now.